All right, guys, it's um, probably past that time, I guess, we it started and the bar will be open later, but you can go out and buy your own. Um, hopefully not until after lunch, although it could make the day better. Um, <laughs> thanks to everybody for coming. I know some of get away any time of year. We've been on the road now for a bit over a week, um, telling these guys what we can in Australia, and we knew we'd put this together, we wouldn't get to anywhere near enough places, so... Really appreciate you guys taking the time to be here. And one of the things we want to do more than anything is to make sure that you can leave the next two days with your questions answered as best we can. Um, I'll handle the really easy ones. Um, but whatever your questions are, this is a, a safe forum and it's a great forum. And there's probably 10 other people in the room thinking. So whatever you want to know, now's the time. Um, we're going to make time after each of the speakers to, for you guys to throw some questions at them. Um, but if we could wait till the end just to let them get a rhythm. But try and get as much out of this as you can, because that's our aim is to give as much to you guys as we possibly can in a day and a half. There'll be drinks tonight, and thanks so much to Alex Croker and to Gerald Spry for their generous donation. Um, drinks will start at 6.30. If you're not there by 6.35, I'll have them all. Um, <laughs> but that'll be at the farmer's home. If you're not familiar with where the farmer's home is, it's, it's directly opposite the International Hotel. Um, you're welcome to stay for meals afterwards for those that want to. If you've got places to be, you're welcome to, uh, to go to, but certainly come along for drinks at the end of this. So I'd like to thank you guys again for coming. I'm going to let Luke do the MC because he's a way snappy addresses than I am. Um, and he's probably more entertaining. But uh, I'd like to thank IGS for being here too. It's a 16 hour flight, as we all know. And it's great they've taken the time to come and make themselves as available as possible for you guys. So hopefully, use your time, guys. We'll get underway. And um, yeah, hope you have a good time and hope you get everything out of you need. Thank you, Graham. We appreciate that. As Graham said, my name is Luke Bowman. I serve as the Director of International Business for International Genetic Solutions, or IGS. Jackie Atkins in the uh, back corner, Dr. Atkins is, is also here with me. We are very, uh, very honored to be here and super uh, impressed and, and glad to see such a, such a group gather to talk about uh, or to learn about IGS and our affiliated systems and, uh, and, and potential systems to work with in the future. Um, without further ado, we'll go ahead and get started with our first presenter. And that's Mr. Mike Brooks of CGEN, a software organization. And CGEN is one of the organizations that publish the science behind IGS. And so I'll turn it over to Mike and uh, we'll go ahead and get underway. Well, good morning, everybody. I hope you can hear me reasonably well down there, coming from the frozen north of Canada. Um, as you say, my name's Mike Brooks. Uh, I provide the uh, software. My name's Mike Brooks. Uh, I provide the uh, software currently to uh, Simmental, Galvey, and Shorthorn down at uh, the Genetic Hub. Um, and we've currently been providing software now, a bit of history for over uh, 25 years. We're into the third version of the project. Um, the project was born out of Canadian Charlay, Canadian Simmental and American Charlay back in the late 90s. Um, and uh, it's evolved ever since with uh, basically following technology. Our original project one was uh, was based around uh, desktop within the uh, breed associations. We moved version two on towards uh, web-based breeder data collection, and then now we're um, into fully fully web-based systems. <coughs> with the next uh, iteration moving into mobile data systems, um, these systems are inherently boring. Uh, so I won't take up too much of your time. Uh, but if anybody's got any questions, obviously, hopefully we've got a microphone that works there. Um, and I'll field any questions that uh, 
that uh, that you have for me. Um, obviously, this is IGS thing. So the systems that are down there in use at the moment are all tailored and have been modified for uh, for IGS. And we have the the three main systems, which is the in office system that um, uh, the hub are using. Uh, I hope if Nick's there, he doesn't mind me using his uh, his herd. So basic of the in-office systems, not a lot of graphics, not a lot of things to look flash. Data entry is all about getting things in as fast as possible. So um, I don't know what you're like down there, but certainly on our breeder side of things, I mean, up until three or four years ago, we were still dealing with dial-up people. Um, I'm really hoping that with Elon and Starlink that we'll eventually be able to uh, to start doing more things with the online systems for the breeders. But um, but right now everything's uh, turning down for data entry speed. So we basically have member management within the office systems. I'm not going to spend too much time on on the office systems. Um, animal management, where because we're IGS themed. Um, You'll see that we've got override facilities here. This is where we manage the genomic linking to uh, to IGS for um, the linking up genomic testing and the data that we send to IGS on a weekly basis. Um, your basic animal management, performance data, if this animal had any, progeny handling, that sort of stuff. Um, are all, all, all maintained, breed percentages, foreign imports, that type of stuff, all done through the breed registry. Um, the main registration data entry screens that staff use, again, all one large screen, primed so the staff can get the data in as quick as possible. Um, all the various features, all customizable between breed associations. You can see where we've modified everything for your. Uh, your style of data collection down there. Um, lab applications, lab test requesting, lab test results receiving, uh, all those sort of things are all built into now to the web engine that we, we supply to the offices. Uh, we have custom tools that they can use for um, data importing from uh, Herdmaster, and uh, we're working on one other piece of software right now. So we can import directly from Herdmaster and uh, Stockbooks. Um, sale catalog export tools, all these things that are common to, to main breed registries. Um, one difference specifically with perhaps systems coming out of North America is we do do a little more reporting perhaps than you're used to back from the associations, uh, growth performance reporting and, and that sort of thing on uh, phenotypic data. And I will cover that later when we go into the, uh, into, the, um, into the breed systems, individual member systems. So it seems we only had a short amount of time, that's a quick whip through the, the registry system. Um, uh, that the office uses. So the second part of the system that we run is the public side of things, which is this search engine that we run. And we run the, the basic member search. Member contact information, that sort of thing fairly basic kind of stuff. Um, the animal search, we run two types of animal search. We run the, the full animal search, which essentially links the um, full herd book, going back to the year dot, and then you can pull up all our nice little bits and pieces um, of any animal in the system that's registered or we allow to be visible. Um, here you can see the, uh, 
um, IGS data that we've post-processed the results, um, various data counts, uh, IGS reports on sires. So let's have a look what we've got. Oh, a good one to select. You can see the IGS logo there. That means the genomic data has been included into the evaluation and they flag us back that information uh, so we can produce that logo. Um, here we have the IGS EPDs, the one index, there are two. Um, uh, Shorthorn at the moment only display the API. Um, progeny counts, they come for sires only from the uh, um, IGS evaluation. Uh, so we display those there. Not all these get filled in, as I say, because they're um, uh, they're whatever the uh, whatever IGS returns to us. Uh, we have the percentile rank graphs there that we calculate for you, and your current breed average data. We are showing phenotypic data on the public website. Um, birth weights, weaning, yearning. Uh, some show ultrasound, some don't. Um, it depends on the association and what they like to display. What you will notice is we're also within the systems calculating adjusted values, uh, contemporary groupings and ratios. And they're all done from within our software. Uh, IGS, I suspect, recalculate this their own way. But we try and map the method that IGS use um, within reason uh, so that you can see how your cattle are, are going to go into the IGS evaluation. We do display the lab results, progeny, again with IGS EPDs and accuracies. Uh, we always do a nice little summary page because the sales agents have always liked to get the information on one page up here. Um, and we do provide a link service for um, breeders to link their data, these pages directly to, um, to their own personal websites, their farm websites. Now, the second animal search is the sire dam selector. And what we've done with this one is we've taken animals that have been registered in the last two years, animals that have been used as parents, and put them into a separate data set. So that when you're looking for animals that are technically available to purchase or buy semen from, that, that when you're actually searching, that the, the animals that are returned are potentially actually available. Um, not dead, not 40 years old. Um, it gives a bit more meaning to the results, we think, than just globally EBT, EPD searching the, uh, the main database. And from this, we can do various things, percentile ranks, upper lower limits, sires, dams, AI sires, which herd books out of a particular AI sire, or by breeder even, if you were looking for something specific. Um, so that's that particular item. And then from the main one, we've also got a little mating tool that people like to use um, that we're currently in the process of extending. That will, you can enter up to four sires and then as many females as you want. And then we have a little, little matrix that comes out that gives you the estimated breeding values um, from those particular matings, along with the breed average. Uh, particularly useful for, obviously, for planning. Um, that's the public section. Now the one most people are always interested in. Um, is the breeder section. This is the section that the individual farm user, breeder user would be using. Again, it's not designed to replace Herdmaster, not designed to replace full breed 
um, full herd management systems. It's designed to get the data in as quick as possible um, to your host breed association. Um, so from left to right, if you've not been into the system or never seen it before, it tends to be herd, performance recording, reporting, uh, options, and tools. So the system tends to work nice and easily from left to right. Um, the, the, the quick look, I mean, if we go registered males, shows all your registered males, quick disposals, um, quick display of information. Uh, I picked the wrong one, but quick display of information from there. Uh, inventory management, heifer inventory management, unregistered calves. So one of the things with these systems, which might differ slightly from what you've done in the past, is that we want you to enter all the, all the data, all the animals that hit the ground, all the calves, rather than just the ones you want to register. I mean, there are various reasons for, for that, which is your breed improvement staff can explain to you better than I can. Uh, but one of the main reasons are now is we need to identify the animals clearly at birth, prior to registration for lab reporting, uh, contemporary group building, um, all these different things. So we prefer you to get the animals in as soon as possible rather than just when you want to register them. And we can do that from calving. And we'll change to a year that, that Nick's uh, used before. So you'll see he's got some registered cattle in here and he's got the UNR unregistered cattle. If you add new animals, you simply just hit add and you can add the full phenotypic data collection there as well as the, uh, the birth and breeding information. You can edit an existing animal. This one's only got birth um, and a simple registration, which I won't go fully through with, but Basically, you click that, you click that, you click save, that animal will be registered, um, invoiced at the office, and uh, the paper will be available for the office to print for you. Um, again, speed of entry, we like to try and give systems the way people to get the data in quicker. Uh, so we have um, list entry systems for weaning, you can enter all the stuff just into grids like Excel here and uh, an Excel style grid and just get the data in. Um, we've added recently the ability to import directly from Herdmaster, wait, Herdmaster format. Um, and export now uh, the EPDs weekly back out to, uh, to your data, your herd management software. Uh, ultrasound data entry down there is done by you. So you can directly enter your ultrasound data through here, or again, we can take it via the uh, import from uh, Herdmaster or Stockbooks or anywhere that's using that particular uh, format. Uh, so some things that are slightly different perhaps than what you did previously when you were sending data to other service providers is we've always reported back, um, reported back calculated values and performance data back to the, to the breeders. Um, so for instance, for this 2020, We've got the herd EPD reports, herd listings, blank worksheets, ultrasound barn sheets, that sort of stuff. But if I was to quickly, quickly go through one, we've got 2020. What you'll see from this is that, um, I zoom this in. 
pull that out of there. So what you'll actually see is we actually take the performance data, we create the contemporary groups based around the management groups, and we actually produce reporting for you, um, ranking and indexing. Now these are phenotypic ranks and indexes. They're not the indexes you're used to seeing from IGS. This is phenotypic uh, data reporting. This gives you a good indication of, of, of how the data is going to go into the IGS evaluation or any evaluation you choose to use. Um, but predominantly the IGS, we've set the adjusted values as best we can to mimic um, IGS. Uh, so this is the individual style of reporting here. And you'll see for this animal, it's number in the groups, the contemporary group of two, management group, having ease, age in days, um, all these various things, and the current EPDs that are reported. Now, as you enter CAVs, you will also see that we'll create what's called pedigree estimates, which in between each of the evaluations, the weekly evaluations, you would get um, pedigree estimates in here, which are basically parental averages. Uh, some of the other reporting we can do from the online. Um, some, a lot of people like the, uh, the lifetime reportings we do for the, uh, for the Downs or the Sires. Um, so if we take a 2022, 2020, sorry. So what we've done is basically produced a summary of all the females used in a given year and taken their life history um, and created a display of their life history and averages. And that is somewhat useful for working out why perhaps you get certain values for 40 APDs. Uh, based around data you've submitted to the IGS evaluation. Uh, we do these for females and males. Um, moving, across, well, one of the other things you can do, depending on the breed, is you can produce your own certificates. Um, most of the stuff down in your part of the world is electronic, which is absolutely fantastic. Um, so you can also produce your own copies of your certificates, depending on each association's rules and regulations. Uh, you can produce those as well. So from the tools, from the tools section, um, we also have a few things that are of interest. Um, sire picker lists, they allow you to set up sires within the system so that when you're entering new animals into calving, uh, you can do quick list sires from here. Really nice when you're trying to, um, uh, especially using a repeated AI sire or things like that. Um, tools, data exports, this is really useful. This essentially lets you extract various portions of your data in a X in a CSV stroke Excel format for you to then use within your own reporting or analysis tools within your own farm. Um, as I said, we've got buyer history as well here, and we've got import export from Herdmaster and uh, Anybody else who follows the old ABRI formats? Signature systems. These vary between associations depending on their bylaws as to, as to what they need for uh, uh, issuing signatures or whether it be Siemens or natural, natural service. 
uh, between the braids. Uh, and you can give or use those signatures directly within your registrations. Right, that is a whistle stop tour of the main parts of uh, CGN recording software. Um, I also have down here, seeing as it's Monday, uh, and we're talking about IGS. Um, no, we keep uh, dedicated cloud servers running to run the IGS pre-processing and post-processing systems. Um, essentially, the process is once a week, the data goes to IGS, and it happens to be a Monday, which is Monday for me. Um, so this is the live extract for Shorthorn today, uh, uploaded to IGS, and that's it. That's all the data that's been modified this week, all the new records, has been uploaded to the FTP at uh, IGS. IGS will take that information tonight at midnight and put it into this week's evaluation. When the results come back, which I don't think they're back today yet, um, we have the similar process for the evaluation load. Uh, again, one click, takes about half an hour. Um, the post-processing process we do takes their data, obviously maps it into our system, and then uh, calculates your breed averages, percentile rank tables, EPD trend tables, that sort of thing. Uh, we then review that data once the processing is complete. And if it all looks well, we load it up for you um, onto the live system. Now, as you can see, this is, as I said, running in the cloud. The whole system is running in Microsoft Azure. Uh, we leverage the security and uh, backup strategies of Azure. Uh, and that means basically that the associations that use these systems don't have to run any software, any systems within the offices anymore, which is a huge cost saving uh, to the offices. Right, seeing as we started late, did everybody hear all that? Or have I just wasted 25 minutes? Any questions, please? We're able to hear you. Um, right now, if there are any questions uh, for Mr. Brooks, I've got a microphone, the ladies from the Genetic Hub also have a microphone. Uh, are there any other questions? I know, for some of you in the back, there's a little bit of to be, but um, if there are any specifics, we'd be glad to uh, discuss the software and the knowledge of this we can use for you. In the Meta Design Link section, you can look up the scanning results of bull search, uh, bull leeches, but not the scanning results of cows that are no longer active. And in that case, we bought a lot of cows 10 or more years ago, and they're no longer active, but we can't look up any of the data on those cows. Scanning data. Is it possible to access that? Yes. No. Mike? Yeah? Did you hear Ms. Barlow's question about looking up uh, scan data on poll females? I did not hear any questions, unfortunately. The video um, dropped out. Yeah, you know, one second, we'll ask again. Sorry, Lauren. Um, it's Amanda. I, I was just, I asked before about um, 
looking up the scan data of college females. Is it possible to do that? Uh, cows that you haven't bred yourself that you've purchased? I I am really sorry. I I can't hear that question. Mike, on on purchased females that yes. have been, that have been added to the herd but have been called, they're having difficulty looking up historic scan data. Okay, so the the way the system works is that phenotypic data doesn't move, you're talking about the breeder online system, probably, phenotypic data doesn't follow. So if, if birth weights have been, or weaning weights or scan data have been entered by a breeder on, on an animal, it's not necessarily available within another person's herd when they buy that, when they buy that animal. Um, that's not to say we can't do it, it's just that Phenotypic data typically in North America is kept reasonably private. Um, as far as looking it up on the main animal search, uh, we've just added the regular uh, weight data. Um, I believe with Shorthorn, we're still at the board level on whether to release um, scan data on the public search engine. Does that answer the question? Are there one more line? Hi Mark, it's Kylie Katz here. Um, so we're just looking at the question is that She's just wanting to get some um, physical data on the animals that are being faced that aren't actually active. So could the gentleman with the microphone repeat that question for me? Because I, I'm having difficulty hearing. They're, they're looking for performance data on animals that have been culled from the herd. Well, that should be there. If you've entered the data previously and- That have been bred by someone else. Been entered by someone else. Yeah, so so if I were to acquire some, uh, a herd of cows and they were, in, they were put in my account and then I later called them, I'm having trouble going back and looking up the performance information. Again, acquired performance data doesn't necessarily follow you, follow to the new herd. Um, part of the problem is, is is obviously the way we structure the the group data collection, the the, the batches of data that are in there. Um, if if it's your own data, you've got access all the way back. You just type in the the year that I said, and then you can go look at all your historic data, whether it's cold or not. Um, the transfer of data from purchased animals might not be quite as easy to look up. Um, that would have to be a discussion I would have to have with each individual breed um, relative to, to, to what they want to pass on. Okay, thank you. Are there other questions for Mr. Brooks? We've got another question in my... Okay. Uh, Mike, it's John Cable speaking. Uh, Mike, I was just wondering, with the reports that you got that the IGS produce, is it possible to get them in CSV form instead of PDF form? So we can actually use some of that data to see what impact size are having that we're bringing into our studs um, and say where they're increasing the APDs and lacking in APDs, it would be much easier to use that data as a CSV file rather than a PDF. Um, well, let's keep the split here. IGS don't produce any of these reports. These are um, uh, from CGEN. Um, right, well, there was the data export tool that 
that I mean I don't know if you've tried it or not. Um, so essentially, yes, we've got the the growth performance report here that I showed you earlier. Um, oh, sorry. So essentially, the, the tool that's available is that. So you can take, so we were dealing with 2020 there. So if we took um, calving data by year or 2020, that essentially outputs all the calculated data for a given a given herd calving year so you've got all the adjusted values that we calculate you've got all the um, epds um, that igs calculate um, with some extra percentile ranks that we calculate um, so pretty much for a calf crop, that's where you get the data. Um, the problem with some of the other reports is that to produce the PDF report, they're not one data set, they're multiple data sets linked. So um, the one that's not so easy to do, which I might, I might be able to extend, I might be able to do something for you, is certainly the... Um, uh, ones I showed you earlier that were the uh, summaries for the sires and the dams. Um, uh, I could certainly start to have a look at producing those. Um, but the main tool we've given everybody is, is this. You take everything and then you can import that into your personal software and do with it what you like. If you do have any other more suggestions, um, please contact me directly, go via the hub, whatever. I'm, I'm here all the time to, to answer not just questions today, but at any time um, on how we can look to improve. Uh, I, I'd certainly like to take a look at some of the herd reporting you're doing through some of your, your uh, herd management software tools that you're using and see now with the advent of a better internet that we can... Um, rural internet, if we can extend this system to, to do some more things. Does that answer the question? Yeah. Thank, Thank you, Mike. Any other last questions? <clears throat> okay, thank you, Mr. Brooks. We appreciate you uh, uh, coming in to us uh, from across the ocean. Uh, we really appreciate the time. Thanks a lot. And I'll stay hanging around on the on on the uh, call if it's uh, if it stays live, uh, um, and uh, keep an eye on what's going on down there. Thank you very much, and you all have a good uh, a good meeting. Thank you.